we appreciate you being here for the Council for Opportunity and Education, how to write a competitive uh, conference proposal. I have a really good group of uh, people here to present with me today. We want to just go over some of the things you should know about COE and some tips and tricks on how to submit a great proposal that um, will be awarded for you to come uh, to our annual conference in New York City. But before we get into the specifics, I would like a few people on the presentation or on our um, webinar today to introduce themselves. We are fortunate to have a number of people here with us today that we in the COE Washington D office, DC office couldn't make a conference possible without a number of these people. So I am going to call out their names and I'd like them to uh, say a little bit about um, who you are and what you do in your trio world and what you do uh, as part of COE. So we're gonna start off with Sam Blanco. All right, thank you so much. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Sam Blanco III. Um, here at the University of California, Davis. Uh, I direct three talent search programs and one upper bound program. Uh, this is my 32nd year in TRIO, and I'm currently serving as the 2023-24 COE board chair. I'm glad to see everyone here. Perfect. Thanks, Sam. And we're glad that you could be here with us today. Next, Sebastian Myrick. And there's the unmute button. Hello, everyone. Greetings from Seattle, Washington. And uh, I'm the executive director of the TRIO Pre-College Programs and honored to serve as a, a conference co-chair this year. Um, and uh, looking forward to all of the great proposals. I uh, am a TRIO alum, and this is about my 25th year um, in, in directing TRIO projects hear about. You're a newbie, Sebastian. Thank yeah. you for being here with us. Michelle Scott is our um, other conference co-chair, and she's not on right now, but I wanted you to know her name. Sebastian, uh, Sam, and Michelle, along with our other presenters, will be a part of the reading committee. So that is important for you to understand. Now I'm going to have the other two people who will be presenting with me today introduce themselves. So first, Andrea Reeve. Hello and uh, welcome to this webinar. I'm Andrea Reeve and I am a semi-retired <laughs> past trio director uh, I began working with TRIO in 1983 and officially retired from my work with TRIO in 2013, although I've continued to work um, in different capacities uh, as a consultant to COE and on the annual conference. And this year, I have the opportunity to be a co-chair with Stephanie Cruz uh, on the uh, program and looking forward to uh, working with those people who uh, are submitting and will be uh, presenting at the annual conference. So welcome and thank you. Thanks, Andrea. And Stephanie. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, again, my name is Stephanie Cruz. I am the director of two student support services programs in an educational opportunity center. And we have a lot of years here today because I have 35 with three total of this year. So we're, we're pushing on 200. So Stephanie, just your uh, oh, volume oh. is going in and out. It, so it's um, a little bit hard to hear you. Okay. Um, I'll try to change my mic. Okay. It's, uh, it is it is bouncing a little bit, but I mean, I did understand everything you said, but it was a little bit hard at times. Okay, so perfect. So we're gonna go ahead and get started here. Um, so we wanted to talk a little bit, You, hopefully most of you know 
um, what COE is and what COE does, but in case you don't, um, you're a newbie, um, you don't, you work in the college and access um, field, but maybe not with a particular TRIO program. So COE is a, a nonprofit organization. We are a membership orga organization that really helps college access and success um, professionals uh, with helping students uh, at agencies or institutions make it through high school and on to college with the goal of a four-year degree. Um, we're trying to uh, level the playing field by giving services to underrepresented uh, students. Mo our membership mainly um, supports TRIO programs and right now we have over a thousand colleges or agencies that are um, that are members to COE. We hope that many of you are uh, members of our um, of our organization. You do not have to be a member to submit a proposal. Um, we're looking for a broad scope of professionals to to um, submit proposals, um, and so. We are a national nonprofit. Later on in the presentation, you'll learn a little bit about a regions and state associations as well. Okay, so um, we are the largest uh, professional development conference for college asset access and success professionals. As I said, most of the attendees or most of the prof professionals that we work on a day-to-day -day basis is with TRIO, and that translates into our um, our conference, where we have about 90% of our attendees are come from specifically TRIO programs, mainly directors of TRIO programs. And then we have a little um, bit or 10% of um, attendees that are either supervisors or they're from other uh, college or access uh, programs like in, like um, state associations, for example, New York and New Jersey, California, they have state college access and success. And depending on where we are at in the year, which New York is a really prime place for it, other college access and success programs come, come to our conference as well. We have a really, um, good set of newcomers that come every year and it just keeps growing. So we have about 400 to 600 of our uh, 15 to 1600 uh, attendees that are brand spanking new to TRIO. And um, so that that kind of tracks right with uh, pro, uh, TRIO programs in general that the, that the um, people who um, are staying in less longer. So we're getting a bunch of new people coming in every year. And from the data that we have, we have about 50% um, of the sessions that are submitted to us um, are taken. So if in the last couple of years, we've had anywhere from 60 to seven. 70 presentations submitted, and we've taken about half of them, okay? So you have a 50% shot of getting in if anything, if we can learn anything from the data. Um, we uh, would hope that your presentations can be by yourselves. You can have co-presentations, you can have panels, you can have round ta uh, uh, round tables facilitation. Now, I will say that when you are putting together a presentation, and we'll get into this more, but you want to think nationally. So, if you are in a in a rural place, you may want to um, co present with somebody that's at an urban or sur suburban area, so you get more of a national feel. And, and that would be relatable to more TRIO programs. Okay. So this year, uh, TRIO turns 60. We are incredibly excited about this. This is our theme is breaking barriers, inspiring hope. We will be in 
New York City. Um, and this will be our third time going back to New York City. So we are excited. One of the new things is, or new opportunities of New York is that we are moving from um, the Marriott Marquis to the New York Hilton Midtown. Uh, so it is, it is filled with places to eat, places to go, places to see. This hotel is extraordinary and we are so excited to be there. As we've done since 2021, our conference will be hybrid and what we mean it will be both virtual and in person. So if you are a presenter, um, you will have people in the room as well as um, people, you will have attendees virtual. So you really do have to think about that. And we'll go into that a little bit more on the next slide. We are open for business. We are open for registrations. Um, we are open for people to book their hotel reservations. Uh, so when you get this PowerPoint presentation, you will have the slide deck and you can go on in and click on these clickable links and it will take you to to register for our conference to register for our hotel if you'd like um, all of that is is open and ready to go i mean as of today it was a soft opening and what i mean by that is we opened it and we've been um, promoting it in our weekly newsletter but we haven't done we haven't did any real pitches yet since we are going into our other annual conference that we produce um, every year, and that's our policy seminar. So I hope if you are with Trio that we will see you very soon in Washington D.C. in a couple of weeks. Um, so we haven't done a a, a a full out promotion on the annual conference, and we almost have I think. Um, we hit 150 people already registered with almost no um, promotion at all. So this is going to be a really, really good, fun, big, large conference. So if you are chosen to be a presenter, um, you will be asked to pay your registration by May 31st, the meaning that that you are coming, you are ready to come, you're ready to go. So um, if you do work for a TRIO program, then all um, you would have to pay for your registration and, and we will be looking for that. Um, we'll give you a little bit more dates so you'll have a good timeline um, to follow. Okay, as I said, we're going to do a hybrid format. Um, we have really um, go back and forth, but we love that. Um, the virtual component. So if you want to have more of your team um, participate in national professional development, but you don't have the funds to bring your whole team that only one of you could travel or whatnot, that the hybrid option really gives you a chance to have more of your team members be with us on, on a virtual basis. So it, it is live, real time. Um, all of our plenary and concurrent sessions are done both virtual and in person at the same time. So we have typically anywhere from 12 to 15 sessions when we do our breakout sessions going on at one time. Right now we have four traditional breakout uh, strands so they and they're 75 minutes. And so, and we have one strand of breakouts that are COE Ed Talks that we'll talk a little bit, a little bit later about. They are set up a little bit different. So when you are submitting a proposal, you can specifically say what kind of format that you are interested in. Um, we do want presenters to know that if you are accepted, we expect you to be in uh, New York City to present your session. You, We do not take presentations that um, that you think that you'd be submit, or presenting virtually. And that's because, wow, um, the, the IT costs and the streaming costs are just 
off the charts, right? And so to eliminate some of those costs and to make sure that we can provide um, Wi-Fi to all of our attendees, um, we have to kind of cut back some costs in other places. And so though we do have the option of attendees coming in and listening to sessions and being a part of groups and, and, get, and giving their feedback, it gets extremely complicated um, for us to have virtual presenters and in-person presenters together. So we've made that a rule for the last couple of years that you have to be in the uh, host city to be a presenter. So please take that into consideration if you apply to uh, be a presenter at our conference this year. I'm gonna stop and see if we have any questions. Okay, perfect. Um, someone said, I'm curious to know how McNair will be supported at this conference. I'm not sure what you mean by that. We try to have um, a McNair session at every um, at every concurrent that we host, except maybe for COE Ed Talks, because COE Ed Talks are usually really broad um really broad uh, topics. Um, but we typically do have one for each McNair. Also, McNair is with Student Support Services. We have a lot of college uh, target audiences too. So um, I'm, I, I am glad that if you thought that there weren't as many practical McNair ones as you thought there could be that you're here and that you are um, hoping that you can submit and be a part of the solution. So we do that for VUB and EOC too. We try to make sure that there are at least three to four um, breakout sessions for um, each of the specific target areas, target audiences. Any other questions? And thanks for putting it into the Q and A. It just makes it easier than to do, um, than to have them into the chat box. So I truly appreciate that. Um, if anybody else has any questions, please just pop them into the Q and A. Okay, seeing none, and of course you can always put in um, a question after the fact if you, we go on and you're like, oh, I thought of one, please just pop it into the Q&A. But at this time, I'll turn it over to my co-presenter, um, Stephanie Cruz, to talk a little bit more about our conference theme and, and a little bit more about our timeline and strands. We, uh, Stephanie, oh, there you go. <laughs> Thanks, Sebastian. You can see. If you can hear me now, because I changed my mic, is that better? It is a little better. Okay. I'll try my best. Um, so the conference theme, as Angelica said, breaking barriers and inspiring hope. Um, it's it's an awesome year to be doing this on the 60th anniversary. Um, there's a lot of history that um, we have as our, our um, college access and success programs, which as you know, we, we cover a wide range of um, programs and organizations supporting students, advocating for um, preparation, enrollment, and success. Well, um, workshops should relate to the theme and keep in mind that it really encourages us to find those strategies that improve and increase college opportunity. Um, also, the conference will include multiple sections related to improving college access and success. Hey, Stephanie, we can't hear you now. Okay. I'm gonna... I, I have one more we can't hear you at all now. Um, can you? Can you hear me now? Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. So, um, I, do you need me to repeat any of that? I, it's pretty much probably the last just two okay. three sentences. 
Okay. So um, again, we want to make sure that your um, uh, proposals do relate to the theme. Um, and we will also have some multiple sub themes related to improving college access uh, and success program practice outcomes for participants and professional development. So the timeline. So um, as uh, Angelica mentioned, the um, call for presentations have opened and we've been getting, uh, uh, they're starting to trickle in, which is good. Um, so if you've already um, submitted one, thank you. If you haven't, uh, I'll hope this helps you to um, get that completed. You will have until March 29th to get your applications in. Um, we are planning to, um, make the decisions and notify those accepted for presenting by the week of April 15th. And we will then have another seminar for you all who are going to present so that we can discuss the, the presentation aspect of it. And then um, as I believe Angelica said this, um, you would be, we would be looking for you to be registered for the conference by May 31st, and we would also want your confirmation by the 31st of May that you do plan to present. So the strands, um, again, um, there are, these are the six different um, strands. I'll just read right through them, but they are all defined in more detail on the actual application. So when you go to the form, it will give you a more of a definition if you're not sure which one of these that you fall into. But we have um, Smart Start, First Generation Financial Empowerment, Moving Forward, Looking Back, Culture, Climate and Belonging, Research for Practice, and Partnerships for Student Success. And again, as it says here, we encourage that they relate to the strands, but it's not um, required for, for uh, a successful proposal. So you don't, and I'm just jumping in here, you don't have to stretch it. If you do have a really good topic and it doesn't relate to any of these particular strands, you don't have to worry about it. Um, we do take a number of sessions that have that are outside of our conference strands. For our strands, we only need four to five in each of these sections to make a strand. So um, if you have something in mind that you want to do and you're like, oh man, this doesn't fit, that is perfectly okay. Also, someone asked, can we identify more than one theme if our proposal goes across multiple themes? And of course you can. Um, it's COE and the committee will make final decisions on what strands they go into, if they cross multiple strands, or if we think, hey, we can't make the, the connection, we might take you out of one. So um, we do have final say, but we would love to hear your thoughts on it. It might not let you in the form um, do multiple uh, strands. It might ask you for only one, but you can. There's a place that you can put it into the um, when you're submitting the uh, the description, or a, I think there might be a place that you can have like additional notes or something like that. So as long as you make it um, clear to us, we'll get it. You can just put it in one of those uh, fields. So there's a, a lot on this screen. I won't read every one of them. I know you all can read, but um, we there are a lot of things that we'd like to consider. Um, you know, I, I reflect back to the question on the there. Um, a lot of the times we come to the conferences and we don't see what it is that we're looking for. Well, this is our opportunity to hit all of those special um, groups. Um, they may, you know, could be the, the veterans, adult learners, LGBTQ students, foster care, homeless care, um, homeless students, um, communicating across generations, um, effective practices among, amongst a number of areas like developmental education, partnerships, um, working with post-pandemic post, um, students. Um, I think the, the last couple of these are, are really important, um, as are all of them, but 
the positive um, mental health and well-being for students and staff, especially post-pandemic. Um, and then also as the um, Pell Grant becomes more available um, behind bars, um, working with those impacted by, by, impacted by the judicial system, incarcerated, reentry, parole, probation, the whole spectrum. So we encourage you, if you have any uh, expertise in any of these areas, that you do consider um, writing to, to one of those areas. Okay, so the, the actual form. So this link, and like um, Angelica said, you're gonna get this deck, and this link will bring you right to the application or the, the for submission. And I was looking at it earlier, and, and yes, there you would be able to only say one strand, but you, you'll have those opportunities to um, indicate a, any additional information as you go through the form. But it's pretty self-explanatory, your title, your description, et cetera. One of the things that we mentioned in there is that, you know, we we may have to do some rewrites, <laughs> um, make the, the um, uh, uh, session more appealing or a wider range, but we're not going to change your your, your workshop. If, it, if, it, if there may be conversations, if it looks like, um, hey, this would look a little bit better if we did this and could we adapt it, but that's more of a conversation than just here's your, your workshop. But the, the main thing is getting your application in by the 29th, and then we will review it and then um, take it um, from there. Perfect, Stephanie. And I just wanted to jump in is that so the information here, as Stephanie said, is everything that we're going to ask you about in the next uh, a couple of slides. We're going to talk. We're going to go in to more depth about some of the places that you will be filling out on the form. Before I do that and change and move it over to Andrea Reeve, are there any questions so far that have that you have that haven't been answered about logistics? Okay, we will we will move on. So I am going to spend the next couple of slides breaking down the different parts of submitting a successful uh, proposal. And I, I want for any of you who have been long time TRIO presenters, it used to be maybe eight years ago that you just turned in a general uh, description of your session and that was it. But since then we have uh, add a little bit more rigor to the process. And uh, we certainly want to have proposals because this is a national conference that have, um, that are based somewhat either in practice or in theory that have some kind of conceptual foundation to them. And so we have added a little, a lot more, I guess, actually, to what we would expect as people are submitting their uh Proposal. So the first part, though, that's really important is that we want you to be able to summarize uh, in 75 words or less, 80 words or less, in an abstract, what the session description is. And this is really important because we're going to be using these if you are accepted, uh, if your proposal is accepted. We'll be putting these into the actual conference program. And this is what entices people to come to your session. So this is really important. It's important that you're able to encapsulate exactly what you are presenting, who the target audience is. So a really good abstract can effectively tell you very briefly what the presentation is going to cover. What's the topic and why should I go to this session? And it should summarize a little bit the content what is the format? How is, it, how is it going to be presented? And if you have anything that may be unfamiliar to a COE attendee, you might want to explain that. And it might also suggest who the target audience would be. So I think it's really important in that abstract that you are able to say, 
This is what we're going to present. This will be the format. And these are the takeaways that a participant will get by coming to this session. So also one thing that I think in higher ed, we're really bad about using a lot of acronyms. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, TRIO, we're really bad about using acronyms all the time. And so you want to make sure that in your abstract, you are actually defining things in there and making sure that people, if, as they're reading through all of the abstracts, uh, the, the all of the sessions that, and they're trying to make a decision, oh, which one am I going to go to, that they'll be able to fully understand what the session is going to be about. Because I, I sometimes we hear from people, oh, I read about this in the conference program and I went there and it was a totally different kind of session. So you wanna make sure that that abstract explains carefully what the session is going to be. All right, next slide. Remember that that uh, abstract is a very solid description and also identifies the appropriate audience. So earlier we had that question about McNair so it would be important if it were a session that's for post-secondary or college level students that somebody carefully explain that this is for um, both, it would include both or any kind of post-secondary program. And sometimes that would include both McNair, would include SSS and anyone who is in the post-secondary or college success area. And then if it does link to a comp to the conference theme or to any of those strands, you might want to put that in there. And again, it's really important to say, you know, as a result of attending this, here are some of the takeaways that you'll get from the session. All right, next slide, Shelly. So here is an example of an abstract that might really include a lot of this stuff. And this one is changing mindsets, building on student strengths to select the best college. So in here, we, we do talk about the fact that, that this is um, pre-college. So we talk about this uh, and we're telling them that they're gonna have two leaders from very different campuses and how they would design a pre-college program that would help students from under-resourced high schools uh, select colleges to attend. So, we're telling them that, we're telling them also it relates to the title, which is how do you help students change their mindsets? And so, uh, you know, it, it gives a lot of good information. It also tells you that it's not gonna just be about my program, it's gonna be about two different kinds of programs, people from both urban and rural. And so you've got two different um, perspectives and that you've also got two people who are going to be presenting. So I think a good abstract really gives the potential participant an idea about what this session will be, and it will help them making a selection when they want to uh, figure out, okay, what session am I going to attend? All right, next slide. So that's the first thing they ask you, you are being asked to submit an abstract. The second thing, is learning objectives. So with learning objectives, I think it's important that sometimes you go to sessions and the presenter is telling you how to do something. But I think at COE, we're really interested in sessions that help attendees think through something as opposed to saying, this is how you should do it. So it might be important that you want to include in your learning objectives. This is how we are going to present information that will present new techniques, things that will strengthen the skills of the participant. And that because of attending this session, somehow or another, they are going to have some different kinds of ideas or strengths or skills at the end of the session. So it's not really about, we want somebody to learn about something, but we want somebody to have these kinds of takeaways at the end of the session. Because of attending this session, I'm going to think or do something differently. Does that make sense? We want the learning objectives to be written around 
how this session will help someone think differently. Okay, so learning objectives, one or two, maybe even three learning objectives for the session. All right, next. You are also being asked to explain what your format will be, uh, will you have activities, what kind of technology will you be using? So we want to remember that PowerPoints are great or some sort of visuals, but they're only your script. They're the visual to help you get through that session. But we expect that these sessions are going to be interactive. We do not want you to be, and we'll, you'll see a slide later with talking heads, uh, one of my era uh, music groups, but uh, we don't want it to all be talking heads. No, that we want you to be able to uh, present, your, present your session if necessary without a slide in case there was something that happened, Jelly? Yeah, and I just wanted to remind you again, and I probably will say this a couple more times, is that you will be presenting both to people in person, so that will be in New York City with you, and virtually across the nation. So you really have to take that into account of when you're putting your presentation together, how are you going to engage your participants in the um, in the uh, conference room and and virtually. A lot of times we forget that people are online virtually if we're not in a total virtual setting. So please, please keep that in mind and really think about that as you're putting together your presentation. Okay. Yes, hybrid format. So so the other thing is that people should leave with something, some takeaway, right? So it might be resources, additional resources, things to think about, things that they can look at once they get home. But sometimes it might be a handout, might be a kit, uh, whatever it happens to be, but it should be some additional kinds of resources so that when they leave, they've got some things to follow through with. The other thing is that we do know that people like to share ideas. So you might wanna make sure that you've got some time within your session for idea exchange or some discussion with other people. And then also we want to, we want you to think about that this is not going to be a session about this is how I do it, but this is a session about how you can incorporate these ideas. And so sometimes it's really, it is important if you can have a counterpart. So let's say if you're in a, a highly urban area and uh, you're working with students uh, from that particular demographic, you may want to find somebody from a rural area who has a different demographic of students, but you're going to discuss the same topic. And then you've got some different kinds of perspectives. It's not just then about, this is how I do it in my program, but this is how you can apply some of the concepts to your program. So that, that different kind of perspective is really important. And it might be that sometimes if we see two sessions that have been submitted that are on the same topic, but they are, have different student demographics, we might ask those people to get together and do a presentation together. And sometimes those have been very, very successful because then you have different ideas, but really on the same topic, and it allows the participant to see a variety of perspectives. Now we do have one other kind of formatted session during one time slot, which are called the COE Ed Talks. And these are mini, I might say mini TED Talks in a way, but these are more general topics. And these are not, okay, what do I wanna say? These are not lecture formatted. These are really where somebody in 15 to 20 minutes does a dynamic presentation on the idea and then uh, has some prompts for smaller group discussion. They've been very successful over the past five years that we've been doing them. Uh, people like the opportunity to engage in discussion with other people. And if you've watched a TED Talk, you understand that the format is, here's a dynamic speaker presenting an idea, and then they're allowing people to have discussion about it and to engage uh, with the speaker, and then bringing those ideas back to the speaker, and then, uh, maybe having some kind of a wrap up in the discussions that's taking place. 
So if you think that your session would fit that really well, write it up uh, in that format. And then again, we'd like people to make sure that you do have some time for discussion and questions at the end. So whatever you're doing, make sure that you um, format your session so that you have uh, some time at the end where people can engage with the presenter, asking questions, uh, following up, what did you learn, whatever it happens to be, uh, but that, that you would have some additional things. Again, some of the sessions may be smaller, uh, some of them may be larger, and depending on the topic and the rooms, <laughs> Uh, you know, you may, your your room setup may be different, uh, but again, we would hope that you would have opportunities to engage your participants in something interactive. All right, next. And one thing before we, I want to switch off of this is that, and Andrea touched on it, but I just want to hit it again that um, we at COE are really trying to go paperless. And so we'll, we would ask you if you were accepted and you had materials, we think materials are fantastic and that we need to, um, and we would love you to give out, ha have handouts, uh, resources, all of that kind of thing, but it to be electronic and to have it put all into our application. So you'll have the opportunity to submit your slide deck, any other materials that you want, uh, want your constituents to have or your attendees to have, they also will be shared out um, to anybody who comes to our conference. So if for some reason they couldn't come to your particular session, but wanted to look at the resources in the slide deck, if you've submitted it all to us, they will have access to it, not only at the conference, but six to eight months after the conference. So just keep that in mind. So, and I wanted to add one other thing, which is, that this is one of the uh, primary TRIO conferences, but we will also have many people attending the conference who are involved in college access and success programs that are not specifically TRIO. So I think it's really important that as you're talking and thinking about your topic, that you are broadening it to think about that entire college access and college success audience and participants who might be in there. So that if you're specifically talking only this works with this TRIO program or that TRIO program, that you would be better if you could broaden that concept a little bit to talk about that, the broader uh, community. Uh, and you will have some people in your audience who will not be specifically in a TRIO program. All right, next. So the, the last part is that we do ask you to tell us a little bit about what that conceptual foundation is for your uh, session, not a dissertation, <laughs> but we do want to know, do you ha have some of this based on research or do you have it based on some appropriate theory or is it based in experience? Uh, do you have a model that you're using this from? Because we do want you to be able to uh, explain to your audience that this is not just based on something I did this last year and that's why it works. It worked for me last year. So we do want you to be able to say, you know, we've been doing this for four or five years and this is what we've learned out of experience or we have two or three programs that have been doing it and this is what we've learned from experience or we're basing this on a model and it might be an advising model, for example. Uh, that maybe we've been using appreciative inquiry for advising, and this is how we've been able to apply it to our program. So we do want you to explain uh, what that conceptual foundation is behind the presentation that you're doing. Uh, okay. And the last one again is, remember that you should be able to give your slides or your presentation without your slides. And I know that personally, I've had technology failure. And so it's really important that you be able to do your presentation without your slides. And remember, it's hybrid also. So you'll want to make sure that you're able to engage that audience. Uh, your slides should not be able to give your presentation without you. 
And uh, you want to try to utilize as many of the new technologies, the multimedias, use polls, other ways to engage uh, your audience. And I always like to think of your presentation as a conversation that you're having with your audience, that you are engaging them, you're talking with them, you're having interaction with them. And uh, it's not about my uh, telling you everything and then that's the end of the session. So think about that as you're putting your sessions together. And if you are accepted uh, for presentation, we will have another session on how to, how to present a winning uh, session, how to better engage your audience. Okay, and Stephanie is gonna talk a little bit more about some resources that might help you enhance your presentation. Before Stephanie starts, we do have a question, Andrea, that I think is um, really great. Yes. And if you could answer, it says, would you like sources cited for conceptual foundation in the proposal narrative or just the presentation? Uh, it might be, you know, if you are using a theoretical foundation, you might want to cite that. But again, it this is not a dissertation. So you don't have to have, you know, 10 pages of references. But if you are, cite, let's say you're citing a, a specific um, theoretical foundation or theory, then you might want to cite what that theory is and who the authors are or the research behind it. Um, and like Andrea said too, it doesn't necessarily need to go into the description, what will make it into the electronic book per se, but it gives the um, reviewers that are choosing um, the sessions, a good foundation of why you're presenting what you're presenting. And, um, and it really helps them make better decisions if they are ex to accept or not accept your proposal. You know, and Angelica, maybe I should mention that the review process does involve peer review. And so each session will be reviewed by at least two peer reviewers who will, who have some expertise in either pre-college or post-secondary and by uh, if if it is specific to a trio area, uh, people who have some expertise in those areas. And so that is very helpful for people to know, okay, this, uh, this, this proposal around taking students to study abroad has some theoretical background on the value of engagement of juniors and seniors uh, in high impact activities. And so citing that and then tying that to the actual activities, I think says, okay, there's a background for doing this activity. And I think that helps the reader say, you know, this, this one might be more interesting than someone just saying, oh, I'm taking a group of students on a study abroad and I'm describing their study abroad activity. I'm tying it to some research it shows this helps with retention and engagement of juniors and seniors, if that helps at all. Yeah, that's perfect, Andrea. And I wanted to stop here real quick um, before we go into some of these resources and, and helpful ways for presentation is to ask people that are on um, with us today, if you have, if you have already um, presented at a COE conference and what, um, and what topics did you cover? So we, I just like to know into the chat. So if you could do that for us. It can be very general. You don't need to look up what the title was or whatnot, but if you have, we would like to know what, what topics that you covered. And maybe everybody is new, so that could be it too. But I, I do know some of you have presented to, on uh, one right so, there. You've got yeah, one. Yeah, Trio Day celebrations, alumni engagement. That's beautiful. Uh, serving students with disabilities and adult learners. That is well needed. That is great. Um, he, someone presented at Texas Trio about mindfulness and self care. Yes, and, and, yeah, and multicultural leadership styles. Perfect. This is wonderful. So th if you guys, if if you're looking up topics or whatnot, um, please do put into the chat because it really helps us. As you can see, the the wide variety of um, uh, sessions that have been presented in the past. Okay. So, and perfect. someone new. Yeah. 
So, all right. All right, Stephanie, now on to you. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Again, I hope you can hear me. Um, yes, yeah, so this is for me the fun part. I always like exploring different um, tools out there. But we have a, a number of things here. They'll all these links will all be in the, the deck when you get receive it. Um, these are all designed to help you prepare your your um, your workshop. So um, slide we have SlideShare, which is one that I've not used. I don't know if Andrea or, or Angelica has, but Canva. I think many of us are familiar with Canva. Um, this link on making the most of conference presentations and the, the, the last two public speaking and conference sessions, I think are really good tools to help you in your preparation for for your um, your workshop. The polls everywhere, like um, Andrea said, mixing it up, you can't be in front of the, 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 the classroom just talking and reading off a, a screen. The polls is a great way to get the, the the room engaged in um, what you're speaking about. Sometimes it doesn't even have to be about the topic. It's just, you know, trying to get to break that ice and get people to to say where they're from or why they're there that particular day. So um, again, I encourage you to check out all of those um, links there. Okay. Um, again, um, this is mostly, this is Canva. Canva has a lot of um, different elements within it. And there is a free version, there's a pay version, but I think the free version really get, gets you access to a lot of tools. Mm -hmm. And um, it's worth at least checking with your institution if you're connected to an institution. Sometimes they have licenses to these or some of the other tools we're gonna look at on the next screen. And if they do, you'll just have more, you'll have expanded um, use within each of those. So here, here's a list of some of those presentation um, software. Um, I, I, everyone knows Microsoft PowerPoint, but um, you know, Prezi's been around for many years. Canva, all of these, uh, I would just play around and see see what's out there. Try something new, and you never know. And of course, don't um, let this be your last stop in terms of presenting. Even if, whether or not you get selected for, for COE, please consider um, presenting in your regions or maybe a neighboring region. Um, I can tell you NEOA is coming up in April. I don't know where they're at in the, the proposal process, but come on up to New England, we'll welcome you. Um, but um, again, these are the, the, the regions uh, across the, the nation. So um, it, if you haven't presented in your own region, I, I would definitely make sure that you, you try to do that. And um, if you get accepted, bring, bring, that, bring that proposal back to your, your region next year. Because I, I think that um, the more people you reach, the, the better off we'll all be. So. And I would just like to say too that um, I do want to remind you that for for COE, most people that come or attend are on that director or supervisor level, mm -hmm. uh, whereas at a, um, a regional or state chapter meetings, you have a lot more staff in addition to your directors there. So really take into account your audience um, when you are submitting. I think you can change a few things, um, add a few things when you're doing when you are submitting to a regional or state association to really make sure that you're encompassing uh, a different audience when you are submitting for them. So I want to just be clear that we really want um most of these presentations to be very um, at the supervisor director level um, as well, that we're trying to get from you. Um, it's things that they can use and their team can use, right? So it still will filter down to all team members, but we're talking it from a, a, a director perspective for the most part. Hopefully that makes sense. Okay, 
So if you are ready to submit, we put the link in here. As I mentioned before, when you receive the slide deck, you will have live links in every um in the in the PowerPoint presentation. Someone asked when will the um PowerPoint be available? What we do is we move um, our recordings to YouTube, and then we'll send uh, the recording out with the um, with any other things that we think are are of interest to you. So for this, we'll probably send the link to submit on its own as well. And if there are any other resources that the presenters or anybody that you know, may email us and say, hey, can I get this? And we'll be like, oh, that's a great idea to send out to all um, people that were on this particular webinar. So you'll receive that. It does take us, again, um, a couple of days, three to four, just to kind of cover our basis um, to get that out to you. Again, the um, the in, the due date is March 29th. It's March 29th at 11.59 p.m. Eastern time, okay? So it will close um, by midnight on that day. Um, we really, really, really would love you to submit before that deadline, right? Um, in the last, I would say, Andrea, you can tell me if I'm wrong, but I think in at least the last five years, we haven't extended it because we've had enough proposals come in now. Exactly. I, we have not extended it. And I do want to say that we have had a lot of them come in at 10 p.m. Yeah, I was going to say, so, <laughs> so Andrea is always like, hey, should we extend it? And I'm like, ah, ah, let's wait, let's wait. And they start rolling in. Um, so please try to make that deadline. We would really appreciate it. If we don't have a healthy group of um, submissions, we will extend it. But again, I can't remember in the last at least half decade where we have um, extended it. We also will not accept um, paper copies or any other kind of platform submission besides uh, doing it through our form site. So that's very, very important. And so because it'll get lost somewhere, um, if you start sending us paper copies and we lose that email or whatnot. So it's nice for us to have it all in one place for when our reviewers review them. Um, so please be mindful of that. Um, lastly, um, I want you to know that we hope we hope, okay, it's always our hope, but we are hope to have a pretty decent turnaround from when you submit to when you find out. We really would like to have everybody notified in April and as we're gonna start uh, getting our program really solidified by the end of April. And um, that means we would have to know, notify you pretty quickly. It gives you an opportunity if you haven't already decided if you were coming to our conference to get registered and all that kind of good stuff. So um, we do hope to have um, you notified by April 15th. If you are um, presenting with other presenters, we typically take the first person that is in the form site and they are the ones that we call our lead. That will be the person that we notify yes or no. And um, we will ask that they update um, everybody else on the team. We'll also give you an opportunity to make sure we have everybody that you wanted to present on there. I think we have two, maybe three um areas where you can have up to three presenters. If you have more than three, we'll ask you to submit them separately. But, and I think I give you a place to upload a, a spreadsheet for that. So, or a, a Word doc, whatever, however you wanted to do that. So um, those are a little bit of the nitpicky kind of things um, that you might need to know. Also, one other thing is that typically we will accept one presentation per presenter. So uh, if you're submitting more than one, there is a question asking if you're submitting more than one presentation and we will weigh and if you've submitted two or three, we'll look at two or three of them and we'll make a decision 
uh, which of those we would accept. Uh, very, so. very good point. We really try hard not to have presenters present more than once. It's we have limited the number amount of sessions that we do because we are doing it hybrid. And so we used to have about 22 concurrence going on at, at one time. Now we're down from 12 to 12 to 15. So we um, we will only take one of you, as Andrea said. And so please be mindful when you do submit presentations. This next slide is just our contact information. Can you see that I have 2024 ever? Just to make sure we all know what um, year we're talking about. So not only my information, but we have our conference program chairs, Stephanie and Andrea, who are on the presentation here. Um, Sebastian and Michelle, who Michelle is with us now, um, they are our conference program, or they are not our program chairs, they are our conference committee chairs. So they're kind of running the whole scope with our board of directors. And then Sam Blanco is our chair of our board of directors for um, COE. So if you have any questions, you should certainly start with Andrea and Stephanie Cruz. If you um, have any more uh, higher reaching kind of questions, you can always reach out to Sebastian or Michelle or even Sam. All of us um, work together and we would love to hear from you. Lastly, is if you have any uh, um, additional questions for us. I know we ran over. This is probably the first time we have ran over on this um, on this webinar. Um, but if you do have any pressing questions, go ahead and put them into the Q&A now. So there's one other one in there uh, asking if the links will be available. And I wasn't sure which links. So I just, just wanted to mention that we went back and checked the links for the uh, to some of the uh, presentation software, and some of them work, but some of them are all, some of them don't. Some of them go all go to uh, some of them all for some reason or another. Uh, some of them all go to Visme. So uh, all the ones from Pitch to Powtoon work, but the other ones all go to Visme. So. We're going to have to correct those, but you can just actually, if you put in the title of the, the presentation software, uh, you, it'll take you right to the links on those. So uh, that's something I don't know what happened on those links. Uh, that was on slide 21. So if that if you were asking about that one, uh, I don't know, somehow or another that one got messed up, but uh, I think and the links to the um, the application is in there, right? That one works, right, Jelly? That'll take them straight that to the to the it application does. for submission. Yeah. So, and also, hopefully, those links will be correct before we send them out. So, okay, that's great. Thank you. Um, any other questions? Perfect. So well, thank I, you so uh, much for um being here with us. And again, I said like three to four days. Um, you'll get the slide deck and any other resources that we will send out to you. Panelists, thank you so much for being here with us today. And um, don't be surprised if we have some potential uh, submissions uh, come to you for questions, okay? Thank you and have a wonderful day. Thanks. Bye.